So if you're an avid Tailwind CSS user like I am, you might have heard that the 2.0 version has officially launched and with it comes uh, basically a whole new website with some updated documentation, a lot of new features and whatnot. Um, I'm not really doing this video to kind of go over what Tailwind 2 brings us, but more so how to use it with Ruby on Rails or install it, I should say. Uh, I've covered this in the past and I figured I'd do an updated version. So this is going to reminisce the original versions. You might check those out if you need like a really detailed guide, but this one will be kind of just a, a quick guide update. Some quirks that are part of uh, installing it on Ruby on Rails that I'll walk you through. Uh, which is a common quirk you'll have to find and, and kind of circumvent. But like I said, I published this before. There's the original blog post to install it on Ruby on Rails, uh, the first version of Tailwind, and then version 1.2, which was kind of a major release at the time, which is already out of date. So the guys at uh, the Tailwind team have just been cranking out updates. Um, it seems like every freaking day. So it's kind of annoying, but also cool. But uh, if you check the documentation, it got a, a very big makeover. It looks real nice, big, bold, and loud. Um, there's a lot of new features of Tailwind since those past videos I've recorded, uh, including like gradient support. Um, you can like at apply anything now. So when you write custom CSS, you can do uh, like large screens and small screens in there without using any media queries, which I think is a big game changer for me particularly. Um, there's a built-in dark mode configuration, focus ring. So there's actually a library now for form inputs, which I might update my other stuff, like my kickoff template to use. So we don't have to really reinvent the wheel there, but it comes with some great defaults that you can extend and, and move really quickly with, which is the reason I like the framework personally. So what I want to do in this guide is just kick things off and get it installed. They have some like integration guides. They don't have rails on here i guess it's not the latest and trendy thing so they don't really support it but that's that's fine that's what i'm here for right but you can install it using npm um, rails typically uses the yarn library as opposed to that um, either works um, i guess but i would i would stick to yarn for this case since it's going to be what is common in a rails app um, aside from that we can kick things off so what i want to do is just create a vanilla rails app in my my code directory so i'm going to say rails new it's going to just be a default app so I'll say tailwind 2 and maybe i'll do it underscore something like that and just do the default app nothing nothing with it by default um actually it is using something by default so let me um fix that real, real quick i have a dot rails rc file so let me grab that okay so rails new tailwind underscore two i'll run that it's going to be a vanilla app nothing under the hood just basic what comes with rails so we'll install that and carry on with the tailwind installation so with rails installed we've got our tailwind two app and it's just on the latest and greatest. I'll open it in VS Code. So let's open this. Everything's green right now because I haven't initialized. Well, it's initialized, but I'll just do a git add blah. Just say git commit init. Okay. I just don't want the editor to be Christmas lights. But under the hood, we need to have the concept of adding Tailwind to our stack. Luckily, it comes baked with Webpack and Post CSS support. Configuring that on your own can be a nightmare. So you know the rails gods and the, the people that contribute to the framework has made it really easy uh, thanks to the webpacker gem and whatnot um, but that's the side the point let's install tailwind now so there's a quirk with this step where right now rails is running post css 7 compatibility the newest version of tailwind is going to go for 8 so to compensate there's an actually different build we'll actually need to leverage when we install this and eventually we'll update this. You'll want to update this to the latest and greatest, which is just at latest uh, should be the good flag. So what I'm gonna do is go to the link here. If you see it in the URL, I'll close these off and grab this line here. Since I'm using yarn, I won't need to uh, do the NPM install. We're gonna do yarn add instead. So I'm gonna copy this line, go into my project, 
uh, where am I at? Am I there? I am. So we'll just say yarn add and then paste that line. And it's going to have this NPM name stamp and that's okay. It's just more or less getting the compatibility version that we need. So it's important that you grab this so it works with Rails. Otherwise you'll get errors when you try to compile your Webpack um, code, anything JavaScript or, or styles that you run into. Now that done, we need to also add, we can see that change here. We've got Tailwind CSS now, it's gonna add this. It also depends on auto prefixer and then of course post CSS to work. So what I wanna do next is get our configuration for Tailwind intact. So we'll go back to the guide, I'll hit the back button. And we just need to add our post CSS config file, basically get an actual Tailwind config file added. Um, so what I'll just do is use the built-in NPX thing we, we um, can use from the module and just enter this. It creates this file at your root of your app. Now you can keep it there. I prefer it to live on its own kind of folder structure. So in my typical apps, I'll go into app JavaScript and create a style sheets folder. You can move yours wherever you want, but this needs to be referenced from your post CSS configuration. And I'll show you why in a second, because I'm going to move this file all the way up to that one. So we've got the actual relative scope of that files app JavaScript style sheets, and then tailwind config.css. Here's what the base config looks like. Um, it's going to come with the theme by default. And what you can do is either extend it or add stuff to it. And then there's a built in purge mode. So what I typically do is pass in my own module or I guess relative file names to purge. And what that does is eliminate classes and CSS we don't use in the end. And it's just going to save us a lot of um, bandwidth and size of our style sheets in the very end. So what I'll do is pass in some values there and, and continue on. So in this case, for me, it's going to be, it might depend on your app, but you might have like a React app, you might have Vue in your app, but for Rails, typically you'd have this structure to start with. And we'll just comma separate these strings. So for me, I'm going to put app helpers. Sometimes there's code you use to create HTML in helpers in a Rails app. Eight is not right. And then app JavaScript, pretty much any JS file. And then I use view a lot, so I'm gonna add that as well. Up to you what you wanna do. And that's gonna usually, with Rails, it's gonna live in the JavaScript directory. And you could just do a namespace and then star.view. And that kind of just goes through each of those files and looks for stuff that it should eliminate or omit. So that's that setup. What you can do additionally is pass in any plugins you want to add here. One that's brand new is the um, forms plugin as well as like a color plugin if you want to extend your color styles at all. Uh, but let's first get this all set up so we can get things rolling. So what I want to do is grab um, these sets of imports. Um, these are kind of more preferred for the webpacker. It even mentions that here. Uh, so we'll add that to our stack next. I'm going to create an application that CSS file. It could be CSS or SCSS. doesn't really matter. Webpack takes care of it for us. And then that file is going to end up piping itself back into this file. We'll import it here. So we'll say style sheets application and this is going to omit or emit um, styles via webpack so everything's going to transpile down and actually enter our app now there's one quirk with that that we still need to render the style sheet pack tag with the same name and the reason for that is the styles get injected in that style sheet from the uh, javascript pack tag itself so we're importing it 
into the, the global application.js pack, as you can see here. So the style sheets themselves are coming in as this stuff. So it's all based on JavaScript, but it ends up being you know, separated in a way that makes sense for the browser. Okay, so with that done, I think we're pretty close to getting everything set up. It's kind of the same pattern here. If you want to name it Tailwind, you totally could, but you need to kind of update stuff accordingly. Any custom CSS, if you wanted to add some, um, you're going to want to import it in between these two, I believe. As, a, as it says here in the docs. Um, that just allows you to extend stuff but not come conflict too hard with any of the other utilities or base components. So you might add your styles here. Cool. So I will try to boot up the app and see what happens with this if we get, so I'll just run Rails server. And Webpack compiles automatically when you boot up Rails server, uh, thanks to the Webpacker gem. You can also run hot module re reloading using a specific command in another console. Um, so in this case, it would be bin webpack dev server. I think this will get an update soon to be webpack serve, but I'm not 100%. Um, so we'll see that kind of do its translation. You see the size of everything coming through. And we could check the browser out at 3000 and we'll see that, but we, we kind of want to, you know, see it for real. So let's go into our routes. I'll just make a generic, actually make a generic um, controller. So the controller is a static controller. We'll have a home action on it. It's just going to be a static page where we render our um, home. I'll just leave the get request and we can just say root to I believe that's right. Uh, so then we can restart the server because that's probably going to bork. And if any luck comes through, let's see, we're getting our page, but we're not getting our um, styles. So let's double check everything. Did you, oh, you know what I'm missing? Okay. The post CSS config has no idea where our Tailwind configuration is, so we need to actually supply it. I'm not even requiring Tailwind yet, so that's a huge, terrible thing. <laughs> so Tailwind, so we can say Tailwind CSS, and just do it inline like this. And what's neat is you can pass just the config in this instance. So I'm going to say app, JavaScript, uh, so where are we at? Style sheets, and then Tailwind config.js and we need a comma there we go and let's double check our work here oops if we get any errors there we go see how big it is now that's all of tailwind so you definitely need purge css <laughs> holy shit but you notice all the styles change by default here so we've got that in our arsenal now. So basically, you're ready to roll. Now, if we go to that static in our home page, we can use some Tailwind. So font All right, and we can refresh. We've got this. Um, let's do text center on everything. And then like margin top. 32 and maybe I'll do the lorem and see what that looks like. Nice. Um, this is not a style tutorial, but I'm just trying to get you know, some realization that, hey, it works. That's neat. So we could say font light, maybe give it some offset. And there we have it. So Tailwind 2 installed in a Rails app. We did have to use that post CSS, um, I guess, compatibility thing. So at any point, if your app's running that compatibility 
state you might need to update it to the latest which is pretty easy you just do a yarn install of the tailwind css latest and it should update that in your package.json file so that's the extent of this guide i wanted to just kind of do a refresher since tailwind 2 is released i uh, hope it's useful i um, excited to really kind of give tailwind a real real run for its money it's got a lot of features now that are, are very useful so the like gradients and stuff are really neat to see like all this stuff's tailwind so awesome stuff ahead um, i'll probably do more some some more of tailwind specific videos if you're interested in that i do have other guides that are using tailwind pre tailwind 2 but uh, i'll do some updated stuff soon for sure all right take care peace